Thank you so much for staying with us. Welcome back. It is still I Brandy Brick bringing you stars for conversations this morning. The next star with us this morning, uh, Holy Boy. He is a musical artist and a filmmaker, uh, very talented. Hi, Holy Boy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Okay. Uh, so, Holy Boy, uh, who is Holy Boy, basically? Let's start from there. <laughs> Give us a background. Um, Holy Boy is. Um, a filmmaker, Holy Boy is a musician, um, a final student of um, National Film Institute, studying film directing. Mm. Um, Holy Boy is just someone who loves music, trust me. Okay. <laughs> Everything around me is just music. Mm. Okay, so you're, you're putting it side by side with filmmaking as uh, well. I'll put it this way, like, for, very, for a long time since I was young, I was very good at writing stories. Mm. So it was easier for me to like love him. And then I started liking cameras. And then they started buying me cameras for gifts and all like that. And then I just developed love for movies. Mm. And then so I decided to go to film school to learn how to shoot films and how to shoot a music video. So as I produce my song, drop my song, I'm shooting a music video for mm. it. You, you seem to be big on storytelling. Uh, do you want to talk about that? OK. Um, I have a grandma who brings us together when we were very, very young and tells us different types of stories, how she traveled all over the world. <laughs> and then she has this song, she's grandma travel all over the world. She mm. gave us when she traveled to this country, what she saw in this country when she went to Jerusalem. And it was always fun. And there are times she'll come and tell us stories about the past, things that, that have happened long time ago, just mm. for us to know our culture and know things that have happened. And then I shot a short film, uh, Matt. Now, a short film of a boy parents left with grandma. And before they got back, grandma had drawn tribal mark on the child's face. Ooh. So he has to live without, tri without tribal mark face. For the rest of his life. Oh my goodness. So stories to me is just a way of expressing myself, telling stories, telling our culture. That's just movies and music to me. So I do mm. that music. I do that. There's always a message. That's the whole Sure. Okay, so uh, you're, you're still in school. Would you say you've done, uh, uh, you've, would you describe yourself as having started your career professionally or you're still taking your time to kick off? Um, I've been paid so far though. Even my music has made me small money that mm. I never even expected. <laughs> small money. Are you Trust sure? me, small money that <laughs> I never sure expected. Money. You don't tell us what it really is. <laughs> small money and then most times I, because I dedicated most of my time to the Yoruba industry, I was working for Baba Jaja, one popular Yoruba director. Mm. I was always on the set every time and I was being paid for my job. So for a long time going to school, I was doing the three, I'll be in school, when I get a job, I get permission, I move, mm. I get back to school. I was always breaking, if I have a show in Lagos, I move, I come back. I was always breaking, and I school in Joss, oh. in the north. So I'm always on the road. Wow. But it's the passion. I'm working on my project now, so I'll be done soon. So. <laughs> a school project? Yeah, or? final year project. Okay, for the Film Institute? Yes, not sure. Uh, do you want to talk about that? <laughs> Sounds interesting. <laughs> Are you no. doing anything practical? Are you no, shooting no, no. anything? It's, it's really nice. It's, it's a school where you, you just, you, you, you decide to like do film. Everybody's free. You mm. dress how you want. You, mm. you dye your hair, you feel like. It's not a school where you are restricted and you feel so like expressive. you can't dress this way. You can't act this way. And everybody come together to learn filmmaking. Mm. Like director, script writer. We have someone who just wants to be a makeup artist. And it looks stupid, but they want to just be a makeup artist, script writers. But the good thing about it is every time we are doing practicals. Mm. And when you are doing practicals every day, you get familiar with the craft and it becomes more interesting to you. Mm. And that's just the thing about the school. The school is nice, trust me. Mm. Okay, so what has been, what has the support system been like from the home front? I know you did talk about your grandma being uh, the you know, source of uh, inspiration for you, first off, to develop the love that you have for the craft. However, I know that not a lot of African parents want their children, you know, being en engulfed in the, the arts and craft industry, the music and filmmaking. What's the support been like from home front? Funny enough, you know, my mom is a musician, my dad's a pastor. Okay. <laughs> so I'm lucky. Case is closed. <laughs> my son is my dad's ringtone and my mom. So I don't have issues at that end. You my are family, so lucky. <laughs> my family sings my song from beginning to the end. So I don't even have like, 
there was somebody I, I look up to so much, one of my uncles, and then we did a family gathering and I heard him singing my song word for word. Mm. I felt so proud. That was the day I felt like I've made it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because it was somebody that every time I see him, I'm like, mm. I look up to him too much. Mm. And then I heard him sing my song word for word. I was like, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, to know that your family, you know, stands uh, strong with you is beautiful. However, it seems to be very interesting, but there is cons to every pro. So what has the challenges been like, you know, for you trying to establish yourself in this industry? Um, the truth is, there's no money. I won't lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's not easy to push myself alone because apart from the fact that I have parents and they also have, I have siblings and I don't even like talking about my family so I have siblings and they have other <laughs> things they need to take care of mm. and then me and I'm, I'm mostly the eldest and I have to always report back home to like take care of my younger ones too so most times every money every penny I get I invest it in my music recording in everything and promotions and it's it's more expensive for me because i'm managing myself mm. but i'm still doing it because i have the passion for it mm. so every money i gain back i invest it back in the music that's how painful it is but i do it because i love it so are you currently working on any projects and do you, do you um, want to share i just shot um a short film following hope okay. um a short film of um a boy who wanted to make it in life but his younger sister has a disease mm. now after he made it in life he lost his younger sister mm. so now this is a really really big issue for like i like to tell stories that end <laughs> sadly trust me i don't like happy <laughs> when you happy <laughs> end, you do you <laughs> no trust me there's nothing like happy that's ending. why you want to get like one that you cut somebody's face <laughs> How is he doing you? <laughs> I'm not like that friend, you know. Are you sure? Trust me. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So that's the project that you're working on yes, now. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, do you have a stipulated date for its drop? Um, we're supposed to drop it September 10. Mm. And then I think we're supposed to stream next month. Okay. We're supposed to stream. Just have an open stream. Let everybody come to watch it. Mm. I think they'll, they'll drop the address by next month. Do I get an invite? Trust me, I'll, okay. I'll do that. I'd love to come. <laughs> However, uh, you've, you've, you've spoken a lot about, you know, your strides in filmmaking. And of course, you're in a film school. Kudos to that. I, I want to know how you're able to put that side by side with you making music. Do you also tell stories with your music? Basically, I want to hear about your music end of things. Okay. Um, music for me is, is uh, will I say, easy. Mm. because I, I have this talent of just listening to an instrument and creating something out of nothing and then just listening to a word like you can give me a word and I need to make it into a song of course you're going to give us a freestyle so, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's not something I don't struggle too much to record to uh, like and I record myself most times mm. so I don't struggle too much to record to and it's easier for me since my mom has the gift of songwriting too before so, uh, <laughs> I took it <laughs> I took it I took okay it. so you write your song you produce yourself I produce myself the entire myself. process mixing uh, except, and mastery except and all mixing that. it depends not all my songs sometimes I just feel like let me send this to one of my producers um, mm. let me call one of my guy let me send it but sometimes I just feel let me touch my song I know I want, how I want to sound let me just do my thing <laughs> <laughs> just before we came on air we heard you uh, one of your songs Adura yeah that was produced by GHS okay tell us about very very Adura. good friend <laughs> Um, Adora is, Adora came in the dream. I had a dream and then I woke up and then I called DHS. I was like, boss, I'm coming to your side. And then when I got to his side, the song was not even coming. It was just the chorus. And then when I got into the tube to record, I was all crying. I was like, why am I crying to record? And trust me, I'm a pastor's son and I don't like gospel music. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to just sing and I, I, I felt like I sang from my heart and then after that song i started hearing calls like when that song went out i started hearing people calling me like guy i just heard your song on the radio and i didn't know i got there trust me i didn't pay for any radio put i just started hearing people like guy, i just heard your song that way like Yo, the song is nice love this song is good keep singing like this so mm -hmm. like what's, what's going on and it really really boosted my morale because it made me feel like okay 
people are listening to me mm. people like my craft that's good so i need to work more i need to work harder and do better and trust me since then i've been trying to work harder and do better trust uh, me one thing that has struck me in, in in you know the whole conversation i've had with you this morning is how that you are almost always working alone except of course for your cousin and the director that you've mentioned uh and now and i'm hearing also that you write your songs you you record yourself you produce yourself what happened to collaborations um i've done a lot of collaborations in the past years but i've not dropped any trust me man i have this um policy that i don't drop a song except i ha i have enough fun to push a song so i don't just drop music and um that's just myself like i don't just drop a song and leave it there because before i can drop a song with this artist we need to plan how are we going to push it how are we, we can't just drop it and leave it there the lowest stream i've had on my song is 1k and that's just for like upcoming artists and for me i'm up i did myself mm. push myself i can't do there are songs i've done in the past that i have only just 100 views and that's very sad for me mm. but the seeing the growth from 100 to 1k that's really good for me mm. trust me it's a big growth all right let me come in here um i could see that you have a passion for songwriting storytelling and also handling cameras and the rest of them because you told you told us how your parents usually buy you cameras and all that now let's talk about uh, story writing i understand that it comes with its own challenges even though it's so easy for you the way you say <laughs> it what are those challenges when it comes to story writing how and how are you able to deal with them um most times when i what because um most times i'm giving um assignment and i write scripts to sell sometimes um someone can just give me the story idea Okay. And most times to do research on different cultures because there was a story I was supposed to write for someone about a culture in India. Now uh, it was really really hard because when I went onto the internet to check how I could know Stories about the culture yeah. because I couldn't I have to get somebody there, and that's just an, uh, I'm giving you this job I'm paying you for this job go and make the research. So most times when I go to far make all the research, I realize it's not so enough for me to tell the story well than me going there itself. Mm. So to tell stories, to we need to like experience the culture at least to be able to tell the story. That's just the kind of person I am. I experience things and I tell them. That's how I do my things. So in the case of India, that you you don't live there, you only base your research on going to the internet making calls questioning. <laughs> how are you able to deal with that kind of project that you know you will not be able to deliver so well because you're not there and there's a time frame attached to it right yeah so how are you able to do so that what i did was i called a friend and i said do you have anybody in india that i can talk to okay now he said i have somebody in mobile but i don't know about the other part but you can talk to the person those i said will the person know about the culture just said, just talk to the person so i chatted the guy up so the guy's in nigeria and there so i asked him afa do you know anything about this culture can you help me make research and he said okay i'll just give it to somebody here and let the person write up anything he can write up for me and that's how i got it back mm -hmm. but to me i don't like i don't like when somebody tells me something i like to experience it myself mm. because there's more fun in experiencing it mm. yourself than somebody telling you I, it's not fun for me Absolutely. but using that i have to just work with what i have sure. i have no choice mm. <laughs> all right uh, it's been a very uh interesting conversation with you this morning holy boy and and how i, how I want to know how did you come about the name holy boy by the way <laughs> <laughs> so if i tell you the truth that that name means the opposite bad boy <laughs> <laughs> you are a bad boy <laughs> no, no nobody knows like this is the first like my teacher gave me that name in primary school she was like you'll be acting like you're holy and you're a very bad boy a mm. very bad boy and then everybody started calling me holy boy holy boy holy boy everybody, and before i know everything i thought are you really boy. a bad boy <laughs> this is wearing eye glass inside the room get to know me we should be looking at you like this <laughs> <laughs> I'm only. Right. I'm only. All right, holy boy. <laughs> if people wanted to contact you, uh, reach out to you or uh, your social media handles, how they get that? Um, you can contact me on Instagram at holy boy sings. Um, on Facebook, um, holy boy sings too. On Twitter, holy boy sings. On um, TikTok, holy boy and crying. That's all.
All right. Thank you so much, Holy Boy, for coming on the show. This thank morning. you for having me. And of course, uh, good luck on your project uh, as you strive to complete it. Uh, go ahead, follow Holy Boy on all his social media platforms. Reach out to him if you want to collaborate, you want to work with him, you have jobs for him, whatever it is, support the talent and of course pay for it. I, Brand Daybreak, will return after these timeouts. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. <laughs>